hello and welcome to the stream. Um, my name is Russell, I'm for Chits and Giggles. Uh, I play games uh, on streaming and I also play games on YouTube videos and I do other reviews and stuff. Um, okay, sound is okay, that's good because the last thing I want is a horrible, horrible um, audio which is too quiet to be able to hear, so yeah. Um, my name is Russell, as I said, and today I'll be playing Wingspan, which is a lovely game. Um, it's designed by a lady called Elizabeth Hargrave, who I actually had a sit down and chat with on my stream a couple of weeks ago. So if you'd like to check that, you can check on YouTube because I've uploaded the chat there. Um, and it's published by a company called Stonemeyer Games. Um, very nice production quality on this game. Um, currently, I'm doing a solo playthrough. So what I'm doing, playing the game as normal for me. But um, instead of other players, uh, the game comes with this Automa deck, which is actually, I realize, named after the Italian word for auto automaton, which is like a, like a robot, I think. And uh, that's why it's called the Automa deck, and they've kind of carried that through. And I think it was first in Viticulture, which was um, set in Italy, which is why it was called the Automa deck. So that's what I'm playing today. Um, the way that it differs from a normal game is only that instead of another player, the sort of actions of the opponent, which is only one opponent, is going to be dictated by this deck of cards here, which is a very clever little system, to be fair. Um, how it works is each round I'm going to reveal the card from here. I'm going to place it on top of this right half of this card, and you can see there's a little box there. What I really ought to have done, unfortunately, I didn't set this up, is... Um, is basically uh, put a little zoom thing so you can zoom in on bits of the game when I need to. But if you need to see anything at all, just kind of tell me and I'll, I'll promise to try and zoom in. Uh, so yeah, what will happen is I'll reveal this deck and the opponent's deck, uh, the card, will dictate what action it will do. Now it's going to accumulate um, eggs and bird cards. Um, it's not going to have to pay for them, it's not going to have food, but it will use eggs and bird cards to do scoring at the end of the game. And I'm trying to beat their score. So it's going to play a little bit different to me. I'm going to be sort of figuring out getting food to pay for cards and put them in here. Um, but when it comes to the end of round goals, which I'll get through a bit in a, in a minute, um, I am going to be comparing it against this uh, deck, uh, this card here. So if you'll see uh, this card, when it comes to looking at the first goal, um, I am going to try to beat it in terms of the number of bird cards with this nest type. Um, with eggs on. So I'm going to look at this thing. Which of those goals does it sort of match? Um, it's actually uh, this one, I think. Uh, no, is it this one? Yes, it's this one. And so that's the base value. And the the game is going to sort of add or take away from that value. And what that'll mean is I need to beat whatever that value is added with the cubes added on. So if, let's say I have a two action cubes because this deck here says it's added two cubes on throughout the course of the game. I'm trying to beat the value too. And that's the only way that I can get the most points for this. Um, the game has also uh, indicated um, that I play on the green side because it inquires, um, encourages more interaction with the with the Automa player. Um, so I'm going to go through and quickly teach you how to play the game. So the game takes place over four rounds. Um, each round has uh, several turns um, which decrease over the game because basically I'm going to start with eight action cubes in the first round. Um, I'm always going to start a game when you play with the Automa, you always start. And I'm going to choose from one of these four actions. I'm going to place this cube on the rightmost empty space um, of that action, um, which is currently the leftmost column here. And I'm going to play that, I'm going to resolve that action, and then this cube's going to sort of slide over to the left, and that's going to basically tell me um, that I've finished that action. Then the Automa's going to take a turn, I'm going to reveal the top deck from here, it's going to take its turn. My next action, I do something else. Maybe I'll do this. I can do the same action again if I want um, until all of the action cubes are done. The, the end of round gold is sort of figured out. We resolve um, and then we'll go into the next round. But I will first use one of my action cubes to sort of place whether I came first or second. Um, if I don't get any of the um, qualifiers, so let's say I don't get any of these um, cards with that nest type with eggs on, I won't actually score any points for it, but I'll still lose a cube. And then I collect all my cubes. I'll have seven left and that'll be seven actions in the next round, round two, and then six in the third, five in the fourth. So you can see I get less actions as the game goes on. Um, what are the actions, by the way? So the actions are four actions, play a bird, uh, gain food from bird feeder, lay eggs on birds, and uh, or draw bird cards. So let's go through them quickly. So let's say play a bird card. 
I'll have a hand of cards at the beginning of the game, and I will be able to get more cards um, through the game action later on, through the draw bird cards action. Um, but if I have a card in my hand, I can play it. Um, I can play it onto the matching habitat. So you'll see in each of these cards, I hope you can see this, but in each of these cards, they have a little symbol on the top left. Some of them have multiple symbols in the top left, and that tells you which habitat I can play that in. So this one, for example, must be played in the matching habitat. So I'd place it on the leftmost column um, of that habitat that's empty, and then I must pay for that, um, for that bird, bird card um, by paying the cost in food, which is just the little symbols underneath. And that can be, that can be one, two, three food, um, it can even be zero food. Some birds don't have a cost in terms of food. Um, and then once I've played that, uh, any cards that say when played, um, they will activate. That, that power will activate immediately. And then I will move on. And that's the end of the turn. However, um, some cards, for example, this bird card has a brown sort of um, column. Uh, sorry, a brown sort of row, which is this, this bit here. When I um, complete a card or when I do an action, um, in a in a row, um, as I finish that action and I've done that, so let's say I played here and I've done the uh, lay eggs action, I will then move this cube across and any bird cards that have a brown um, bit on it, they will be activated at this point so I get to do whatever it says. Um, then any other, I go through, complete any brown powers in this row and then I'm done. Uh, the second action, oh by the way, so when I play a bird, sorry I haven't finished that one, I'm getting a bit flustered because I haven't fully taught this in a long time. But when I play a card uh, into a column, there may be an additional cost in terms of eggs and that's determined by the, um, the, the column that you play it in. So for the first time you play a bird in any of these habitats, it doesn't cost any eggs. But let's say there's a bird here and then the next bird I play is here. The cost in eggs is actually one egg now, so I'd actually need to pay an egg from a bird card by the way because eggs are stored on bird cards I'd need to pay it into the bank and then that's the cost to play that into that row and as you can see the cost in eggs increases the further along it goes uh, the second action so that was a long one but the second action is gain food from bird feeder so the, um, the 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 dice means that you will choose any available dice from this pot here and I'll take that dice out of the, the, the dice tray, the bird feeder, and I'll take the matching food from there, uh, from the symbol, and I'll add it to my personal supply. Um, as you can see, uh, the further along you go, the more food you can take um, for a single action. So for the first and the second columns, you can only take one food, but as the third and fourth and fifth columns, so you can take two and eventually three food from the bird feeder. Um, there is an additional action on the second and fourth column, so if I was to if I was to play the column here, because this one is full, I could, if I wanted to, optionally discard a bird card from my hand, put it into the discard pile, and then take an extra food from the bird feeder. Um, another rule that's associated with this, by the way, is should the bird feeder ever have all of only one single face of dice showing, so in this example, all of these share a matching face, so I could, if I wanted to, before I take my food, and that goes for between the first and the second food that you take, I can re-roll all of the dice in the feeder and start again. Um, one of these symbols, by the way, uh, one of these dice face shows a, a worm or a wheat. And that would mean that when I come to take this dice, I can take either the wheat or the worm. But in a similar way, if the dice face, if the only dice face showing is the wheat or the worm, face, I still have the option to re-roll all of the dice before I choose. So I'm going to leave these out to remind myself to re-roll those later on. Um, the lay eggs on bird cards is very simple. You take the number of eggs showing on that. The colours of the eggs, by the way, is only aesthetical. They don't make any difference in terms of gameplay. So you choose two or three or four eggs and you must place them on bird cards. Now I must add another little caveat. When it comes to placing uh, eggs on cards, each bird card has a limit in terms of the number of eggs that you can um, store on this card. So this one, as you can see, has three little egg symbols on it, meaning only three eggs maximum can be placed on that card. So it has sort of like an upper limit in terms of the number of eggs. And some um, bird cards won't allow you to store any eggs on them. So just make a note of that. Um, so yeah, taking eggs. At this um, optional action, if you were to um, 
use the action in the second or the fourth column here is to discard a food from your supply to place another egg on a bird card anywhere in your tableau. So that's that action. Um, the fourth and final action is to draw bird cards. And as you can imagine, it's drawing bird cards. And each bird card uh, symbol on here is the number of cards you can draw. Um, I should state that when you choose this action, um, you must take either a card from the tray, which you can see here, or you can take one from the top of the draw pile. And there's actually a lot of bird cards in here. Um, so when you choose to take a card, you take it. And I think if you got a choice between multiple cards, I am going to check whether I think you don't draw until the end of your turn. But I'm going to double check that because I want to make absolutely sure I'm not going to make any rules mistakes here. Uh, draw bird cards. Um, as you draw face-up cards, they are not immediately refilled. Instead, wait until the end of your turn before refilling empty spaces on the bird tray. So that's exactly what I thought it was. Um, by the way, I should say I'm only playing with the base game here, not the expansion. So you won't see any European cards in this game. But um, I would love to eventually get my hands on that. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, I'll get to try that out at some point. Uh, yeah, so the only other thing to mention um, is when it comes to filling up a row, you have only a maximum of five slots in each of these habitats. So there's a maximum of 15 cards, bird cards that can be played. Um, some bird cards will be able to move between rows, depending on the power, that's um, uh, this one is actually an example of it. It says, when activated, if this bird is in the right to the right of all other birds in this habitat, and I'm going to use this as an example, that could also be to the right of any other birds. But when you do that, when it's activated, you can then move it to a different row. So it allows you to sort of manipulate the numbers of actions, the numbers of things you can do in actions, certainly. So say I took two bird cards from here, then I activated this, and then I moved this over to here, for example. Um, meaning I can now take three, lay three eggs instead of two when I do that action. So it's kind of something to pay attention to. Um, but if you should fill up the whole row, uh, you can still do the action. It's just the peak um, amount of things you can do is in this tiny sort of little row on the right of the row here. So you can still take three food, but it gives you an extra bonus and discard a bird card to take an extra food. So you could potentially take four food or lay five eggs or draw four bird cards if you fill up either of these rows. Okay, so uh, at the end of each round, we're going to um, resolve this. If I beat the opponent, then I will score the maximum points. If I um, don't beat the opponent, but I've still got at least one um, bird or thing that satisfies um, this condition, then I will score second place. Um, and those are worth different points at the end of the game. But if I should not satisfy anything that should I not have anything that satisfies that condition, I would score zero points. And those will be worth at the end of the game. Um, each bird also has a number of points on it. So should I play this one successfully, this one will be worth nine points. And that's what the little feather symbol actually indicates when you're playing. Um, I'm transfixed by how uh, cute the eggs are. And yes, you're right. I actually um, can't help um, thinking they're sweet sometimes. Um, and it makes me a bit hungry when I play this. But yeah, look how cute and how amazing. I should also point out that by the quality of this game um, is fantastic. The component quality is beyond. Um, and Paul said, don't ask me for rules, help. I've never played it. How have you never played this game, Paul? It's phenomenal. It's um, I can understand why it's not for everybody. Um, there's a little bit of randomness in terms of what cards you get. And sometimes you can't do an engine that uh, you want to sort of get going. But it's all about like adaptive strategy. Um, but it's kind of quick as well, hopefully. Won't be too long. Um, not yet again. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. Um, you're almost getting to the end of the rules section. So you're actually just in time almost for the gameplay. Um, and Tom says, my house rule is no mini eggs at the table when playing to prevent confusion. And I think that's a solid, solid rule there. Um, I wouldn't actually play any sweets with this because the temptation is just too high to be able to want to just snack on those eggs. Um, okay, so just a little bit about the Automa rules. As I said, the game begins with uh, me playing. But every time it's the Automa's turn, I'm going to reveal one of the cards from this deck. I'm going to place it on here and we're going to resolve the action depending on what round it is. And this helpful little card here is going to tell us, and I'm just going to use this as an example. It's not quite, but basically round one is basically saying, hey, do the thing that's in this row. We'll do it for the for the Automa. Um, and uh, then at the end of the round, we're going to resolve um, based on this. Uh, this will score... Um, uh, this is gonna. This end of round bonus card still is um, something that the Automa will actually utilize, um, and so when it comes to choosing cards 
for the Otoma because the Otoma will actually end up taking cards. We're going to look at this and see if any of the cards satisfy this condition. So there is still a good chance that the um, Otoma will complete their um, their end of round goals. And my end of round goals, which I'm going to choose one of at the beginning of the game, is this. Uh, so I'll go through those in a second. And so every action that the Otoma can do is is kind of resolved. Um, is written handily on here. So you can see they have kind of seven types of actions they can do, including um, discarding birds and keeping them, um, getting eggs, um, getting food from the bird feeder, and activating powers for me, but also adding and removing cubes from the scoring thing, or this thing. So yeah, we'll kind of go through those in a bit when it, uh, when it, uh, when it comes to resolving that. But I think we're about ready to begin the game. The first thing I need to do is choose uh, this end of round goal. So I can either do the cartographer, birds with geography terms in their names, such as American, Atlantic, Baltimore. Um, does Greater Prairie? No, that doesn't count. Atlantic is here. So I have an Atlantic bird in here, um, but will I get any others? Um, there's a Canada one over there, um, and I don't think that's it. So there's two cards, so I could get three points and potentially get seven. Um, and the Atlantic actually helps me in terms of getting this goal but it does cost a lot of um, food. Uh, so we will see, we will actually see whether I take that one, or I can just do this one's birds that eat food. Um, oh, birds that eat specifically um, has a wild symbol. So that little sort of multicolored symbol there, it might be a bit blurry, sorry, but a multicolored symbol, um, if there is a bird that sort of satisfies that, which none of them are on the table at the moment, it will get me two points. And I don't know if that's less risky than that one. Um, I am going to, probably i'm probably going to do this one because you know what i already see one and it's 21 percent of cards as opposed to 10 percent of cards so i think that that's probably the better option so i'm going to choose that one i'm going to keep it in a visible place uh can you see that one there maybe i'll put it down here instead yeah i'll put it down there instead so you can just about see it uh and so if you need me to check that out or remind me what it is at the end of the game that's fine and then we'll just put this one on the bottom of the bonus round deck the second thing and final thing i need to do before i start playing the game is to choose which bird cards i'm going to keep and this is another thing which i didn't explain but everybody starts with five random bird cards every player that is in the normal game as well as myself in the solo game but also one of each food so i need to choose now to keep any number of these cards but for every one that i keep i must discard a food so ideally probably not going to keep them all but i'm obviously going to keep at least one and as i said this one's going to help me so i'm definitely going to keep that one and it requires fish so i'm just going to get rid of a non-fish now i can already see that none of these birds require me to, to pay in berries so i'm going to actually going to keep that one by discarding berries that's a strategic decision i'm making right there uh, the next thing i'm going to look at is what the other cards do so let's just move them into the middle so i can kind of look at them uh, i like having um the brown powered cards because those ones kind of allow you to manipulate the game but i'm I've, I've played these this is the same power it's the one i mentioned earlier on about when you activate a card it moves along so unless anyone has any strong opinions about those uh, i'm of the opinion that i probably aren't going to keep those and i never found them that useful when i was playing having said that they they are worth like three or four points and they are allow me to place them anywhere, which will help me towards my goal. So maybe, maybe one of those, I'll put them in a maybe pile and I'm gonna get rid of that one because it's more expensive. So let's get rid of that one. I'll just throw it over there. And then out of these two, do I wanna keep any of these? This one says, and this one, by the way, will work very nicely for this one because it says bald eagle, which again, is gonna help me towards this goal. Um, but it says when played, gain all fish that are in the bird feeder. And that would be, um, <laughs> you're feel free to get some mini eggs if you want. Don't let me stop you, Paul. Um, but just don't, you know, don't keep talking about them just because I'm going to want them. I'm literally going to want them. Easter's passed now. Am I right? Do they still sell those now? Um, so I think that one would be very nice. And if I play at the right time, um, I can easily um, uh, uh, help myself to get that one. So that's a potential as well. And this one is very similar to this one, but it doesn't help me really. Well, it helps me with the first goal. Um, but I already have a card, maybe if I keep that one. So I think the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that one because I don't really want to keep too many cards. Uh, so I'll keep these three and I'll keep the fish food for that. I'll keep the, um, I guess I'll keep the uh, wheat food and then I'll just discard the others. Now, I don't know how you feel about my choice, but uh, I'm going for it. So yeah, those are the three cards I'm keeping. Okay, so let's begin the game. First things first, let's roll these dice. 
Oh, one didn't make it through. Uh, well, that's not great because I really wanted to get some fish, but it's fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now uh, choose an action. Uh, I really want to get some, obviously, birds in the habitat. So I do want to play one, but I have not... I haven't got enough um, stuff at the moment. So whether it's I take a food and just play this one, maybe that one's all right because I can play it in a row. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take some food. Actually, maybe while I've got it right there, it may be a good idea to just get that card because that's going to be one towards my goal. And I think it's a really good idea. So yes, I can hold off from that. I think I can hold out and get some wheat. Um, maybe I should have taken the this one instead because I can see that. I don't know if I should have done that before or after, but I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to take a bird card. So as I said, you place it in the leftmost column um, of the row you want to do. I'm drawing a bird card, and I'll take that Canada Goose. You're going to come right over here. Uh, so now I have four cards. Uh, then that's the end of my turn. So that goes over there. So here's what happens on the autonomous turn. So let's let's resolve this. So I've shuffled these cards, but I, you know what? I'll shuffle them again because I don't want to... I don't want to do this mistakenly. So yeah, shuffle these cards. You wouldn't shuffle at the beginning of um, every every turn, but yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then we'll reveal the card. So here we go. So what's gonna happen is you can see now that this is telling me that I resolved this action, but it also says round one on here as well. So I, do, I can easily play without it if I want. This one says it's gonna take one dice from the bird feeder in this order. So it's gonna start by wanting some mice. Unfortunately, there's no mice there. So next up, it's going to take fish, but there's no fish. Third one is the, the berry. So it's going to take the berry. Now, I believe I read somewhere in here that it says, if all dice show the same result, re-roll all, follow key, left to right, match first type in bird feeder and remove all of those dice. So actually, I'm going to take this one as well, and that's going to go there. Now, it doesn't actually take anything. It just kind of removes it from me. But it does say activate all pink powers on the right hand side. Hello, Daryl, by the way, thanks for tuning in. Um, I haven't, I have done think I've uh, popped into a stream for a while, but uh, thanks for making it along to this one. You're just on the first round. So if you need catching up, let me know. I'm happy to, to explain anything that you're missing. But this is the first automa turn of the game. And it, basically, we're just going to draw a card on its turn. Um, it's going to want to do this action because it's round one, which currently was to take all of the berries out there. Now, luckily for me, I don't need them. So that's actually worked out perfectly for me. So, yep, yeah, it's taken that one. Uh, activate all pink powers. As you see, I've got no pink powers with me. Um, <laughs> I did no such thing, Paul. I did not promise any, um, any uh, uh, what you call it, uh, mini eggs. But if I had some, I wouldn't be eating them because they just look too close to those eggs. All right, so that's the end of that. Don't have any pink powers to activate. So now it's my turn again. Uh, great. So, uh, yes, in that case, I'm glad I'm joined. I'm so sorry, I can't. Maybe if I meet you in real life and I have mini eggs, I will gladly share them with you. That's, that's, I think that's fair. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go and take this one, and I'm going to gain food from the bird feeder. I want to play this bird as soon as possible. And you know what? I'm going to take... Um, do I want to do this one? When activated, I discard one wheat to tuck two bird cards from the tech behind this card. That's quite strong. But I think I can hold off from that one for now. I'm going to play this one because I think that's going to give me um, an ability. Yes, actually, do you know what? I will take that one. I'm going to take a wheat from here. So I'll take the wheat and I will um, remove that from there. So now I have enough potentially to play this one. Um, I assume all board game streamers offer their own specific snack. I'm sure I had a draft kick or two last time I saw Paul. Paul has, um, I heard, has a absolutely... Uh, a lifetime supply of Jaffa cakes, Jaffa cakes from uh, from McVitty. So um, he's totally fine to give away Jaffa cakes. If you see him, he'll gladly give you a box or two. Um, Paul mails me a box every time I watch one of his streams. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, Paul Paul's very generous with his Jaffa cakes. To be fair. Um, okay. So the next thing is uh, had a lifetime supply, <laughs> but they're all gone. That's that's very that's very believable. Uh, so the automa's turn now. Let's see what the automa is going to do. Oh, it's going to take some more food. And actually, it said, actually, if um, all dice show the same roll, result, roll all. Now, this is great for me. As you can see, fish is quite down, far down the list of what it wants. So if I roll a fish, it's going to leave it for me. Oh, I'm going to have to re-roll that one. Please be a fish. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, well, what's it going to take? It's going to take all of these dice. So it's going to take that one. So that one gets removed, and that's the automa's turn. And actually, that's pretty good, like how quick that goes. Um, then it says to activate all pink powers again. Again, I have none, so that's fine. So it's my turn again. Let's take a cube, and you think you know what I'm going to do here. 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this. Play a bird. The Canada goose is coming out. Now, I'm thinking ahead. And actually, this will work out both for me because if you look, the first um, the first uh, end of round goal is birds cards of this um, a, a nest type um, with egg on it. So I will do that. And actually, because I'm thinking ahead, and I could place this either here or here, this is the only one that's actually going to score me at the end of the game. So I am going to play that. So I pay the cost, which is two wheat. They'll go into the supply, and I am done now. I haven't activated this because it's only when I take cards and I go back there. But it's pretty good. Um, but if I get my hands on some more wheat, that could very much pay off for me. So yeah, that's uh, end of my turn. Goes over here. Um, I didn't mention this, by the way, but I will now. Oh, you, do you know what? This should have been refilled, shouldn't it? Uh, fish crow. Never heard that. That's a pretty cool bird. I should read out the fact on that. These birds may eat more fish than other crows, but they're actually omnivores. Interesting. Uh, okay, so... Uh, that's the end of... Wait, am I supposed to... I feel like I'm missing something here. Am I supposed to refill the cards at the end of every turn? Or is it only when I take it? Because if I have, I've been missing out on that. And I do... Manage, as you do a face-up cards, yeah. Okay, I just want to check. Uh, when all players have... Oh, when all players, players have placed all of their available action cubes, the round is over at round end. So I should be, re I should be recycling these. And in fact, what I've missed is... Um, several uh, and I am going to go through it and I'll make sure I just didn't know if that was the case with your Thomas so I just want to check um, end of the round uh, your turn I just want to make sure that I'm not missing out on anything here um, I think it's the same I think it's the same so actually I'm on my third turn so at the end of the first round that would have happened then this one but does that happen in the Automa thing ah oh, man um, I need to check this, guys. If anyone knows, please let me know. But this is embarrassing because I should have uh, checked this. Um, at the end of that card, play a bird from the three face-up bird cards. Pick up all that meet requirements. Um, I think that I don't have to do anything um, because it doesn't say anything here about um, end of turn. So I think it's only at the end of my turn that I discard. And I want to check that. Uh, at the end of the round. Oh no, at the end of the round. So that's not true. Oops, I have revealed one card too many. My apologies. So let's do this. I'm going to put them back. Or pretend that never happened. Okay, it's fine. Uh, okay, that's silly, but that's fine. It's the end of the round when they're replenished, and that makes sense. That makes sense, because it would cycle through them too quickly otherwise. And people will take lots of cards. So um, I've played this done that, um, played the bird. Oh yeah, so what I was gonna mention earlier on, that little symbol there says, if I should have two um, food, if I'm lacking one kind of food that I need to play a bird, and only when you play a bird, I can discard two, any two food, for a different food, um, for the purposes of playing a bird card, but that is not available in any other thing that you wanna do. Uh, okay, so that's done. It's the Automa's turn, let's see what they're doing. Ooh, okay, so they're doing something different this time. Take all the bird cards that match the bonus card. So they want birds that can only live in the water. Well, good news is they have that. Uh, keeps that face up. Uh, keeps highest point value card. Take all bird cards that match bonus card. Automa keeps highest point value card face up and discards any others. Well, it's only one. So they have that one. And then the uh, face up discard the others. So they're going to discard those. And now we're going to refill this. So it wasn't too bad. It didn't actually impact my gameplay at all. But I am going to keep an eye out for this because if there's anything there that matches my end of roll, roll uh, end of round goal, I will be wanting that. Um, so that's done. No cubes added, so we can carry on. That's the end of their turn. Uh, so that's cool. Okay, so my turn now. What was I wanting to do? Now there's no cards over there that I need. Um, but what should I think about doing now? I need to get my hands on some food, and there's nothing good there. Um, so maybe I should lay eggs because I do want to maybe play some more bird cards eventually. And it's nice to have them. And actually it would count towards that. So that's going to be my next action. So I'll take this. I'm going to lay some eggs. So this one is going to go here. And I'm going to take two eggs. Color doesn't matter. But these birds, are, these eggs are both going on this bird here. The Canada goose. All right. So that's a nice and simple turn. And it's done. Let's see what the Automa is doing. Uh, okay. Ooh, so it's going to do something now. 
uh, give the automa one egg for each egg icon shown. Well, there's only one, so that's fine. And I'm going to give them a nice green egg. They're going to live over there. Can you see that? You can just about see that, so I think that'll suffice. All right, cool. Uh, then it's going to add a cube from the from the automa supply, and you're going to add it on the current round gold hull. So this is basically what's going to happen. It's going to add it to there. So now I'm directly competing with the automa on this because I have one bird card that satisfies it so do they because that's what that stands for so i need to maybe get another one um and actually i only have this one here which is actually probably achievable we'll see okay so uh i'm going to try and play this now i do need more food and i could use that worm so i think the next action i'm going to do is going to take the take food action and that'll be good because it means that the next turn that's going to get rolled so i'll remove that I'll take a matching um, food from the supply, uh, which you can't see. So maybe I'll put them over here so it's easy for you to see what I've got. Um, I think even if I could just slightly tilt it round so it's a little bit more uh, dead on. So that, there we go. Uh, so that's the end of that turn. I am now going to uh, let the automa take their turn. And that's hopefully going to be about getting food, but we shall see. Okay, so they're going to take another bird card, uh, which is good for me because uh, I am going to um, see some new cards. And I don't think any of those match my goal, does it? Sand Hill, Savannah, Western. I could make a check, actually. No, none of those match mine, so that's fine. Okay, uh, so the instructions say take all bird cards that match the bonus card, none of them. So if that's not the case, it says if none match, Automa draws one and keeps it face down. So they're going to draw one from the top of the deck. And I'm going to clarify this because, again, it's not 100%. But it says, uh, of, of these cards, the automa, uh, if there are multiple cards, nope, uh, place it face up. If no birds meet the requirement, draw one face down bird card, place it face down. Um, it doesn't say, by the way, that I discard the cards. So I am going to assume that they stay as they are. Um, yeah, and actually one of the things I didn't mention in this game is that the automa will actually collect points for bird cards They've collected and the difficulty which I've decided to play on normal difficulty I didn't I didn't explain that at the beginning But the number of points for each card that the automa scores changes depending on the difficulty So I'm playing normal so every card that they get which will be this one still have that card sort of face down So I'll just put it underneath there um, Actually, I'll put it underneath here because I won't get confused then um, is going to be worth four points. If it's easy, um, what I liked about this actually is in the rules it says um, difficulty level, the eaglet um, is worth three points per card, the eagle is four points, and the eagle-eyed eagle is worth five points, and that's like the most difficulty, so I thought that's quite funny. Uh, okay, so um, they've taken that card, that's the end of that round. Brilliant. So my turn. Uh, I think it's possibly worth the risk now for me to... Um, to take the food again uh, because there's nothing there that I want. Um, I've got no space to lay eggs. I can't play a bird, so I have to do this. It's almost like forcing my hand. But the good news is because of the layout of this, these are all the same. I get to reroll all of them. Now, I haven't seen a single fish um, this whole game. So if you have any ability to uh, manipulate physical objects and you can stretch as far as London with that ability, please, please give me some fish. So I really want some fish. Nope, no luck so far. Have I cursed these dice? Oh, hooray. Oh, my God. Well, that's great because I'm taking that. I know I could take the, um, the the worm potentially. I don't need it. Actually, interestingly, I would have been happy with wheat because it would allow me to play that. But fish is going to be more useful for me um, in terms of my strategy. So I will take that. All right. So there you go. There's another fish there. And that's the end of my turn. It goes down here. And then the automa's turn. So I think we're on round six now, uh, turn six. Ooh, okay, this is great because they take an egg. So let's give them a nice blue one over there. Just ordered you some fish. <laughs> you know what? The irony of that is that I actually hate fish. Um, apart from like cod and tuna, um, I actually don't eat fish. So that's like horrible. I can't even, I can't even take the most of that. So that sucks. Um, but the good news is because that must be a good action for the, the, the round, Tell me to remove a cube from here. So I remove that. Now I am in the lead. 
in terms of the end of round goal. So that's great. Cause that's four points. That's the difference between um, three points um, because if the um, opponent has zero, four points, because if their opponent has zero, they don't actually qualify at all, I think. I'll check that at the end of the game. So that's great. Um, now it's my turn again. I don't still don't have any enough um, things to play anything, but I could now... Um, I can't really... I, I want to... I can't take eggs because I've got no space for them. Um, I could just take a bird card. I could just take one from the pile, I think. Because I... I mean, unless I want to take that food and try and get something else for next turn, but I'm worried. And I think he hasn't taken food in a while. Um, I won't be able to play it this turn anyway. So I think probably the best option for me is to just take a card at random and see if I can just get something else. Because usually I'd like to play at least two cards um, in this game. Um, but, and I can also do... Oh, I have no wheat to do that either, which sucks. Because that would score me like two points at the end of the game. You know what? Let's just do... It doesn't matter if I lose. I think I'm sitting pretty on that gold air. So let's just do um, taking a bird. And I could discard a bird to take two, actually. That's nice. Actually, let's first of all, before we do that, I have a worm um, that I could use for this one. And that one allows me to gain a worm from the supply, um, which doesn't chain with anything. This one allows me, when activated, to tuck a bird card from your hand behind this card. If I do, I gain one from the supply. Now that is a lot better because that one would chain nicely with this one if I can play it. Well, I can't, but if I could, that'd be pretty sweet. And this one here um, is tuck a bird card from your hand behind this card. If you do gain one worm or one wheat from the supply. Um, so that one turns cards into um, supply, but those two are in regions that I'm not really looking to get but they will help me later on so i think what i'll do i think what i'll do i'm gonna draw um a card from here i'm gonna see what it is okay so it's a juniper tip mouse uh this one gains me um one wheat from the supply cashing it on this card which doesn't help me ne necessarily um but i think it's still good it's still good so i'll take that i'll take that card and i think for my other action i'm gonna take um this one is easier um, to make happen, I think. Um, I'm not going to be able to do all of these bird cards. The thing about this game, which I've noticed, is that when you play this, you always think you're going to get to play all of your cards, but ultimately you might end up having to sacrifice cards. And actually, that's probably not a bad thing because I can sacrifice them to get more food um, on my next turn. So I think I'm going to take this one because it is generally better and it also helps refresh the whole board there. So yeah, that's good. It gives me more flexibility. It's worth less points. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that one. So I take that card. Uh, move that one over, give it a bit of space, and then discard these because I've taken from there and refill it from my from here. So we've got the common nighthawk, um, which is another bird that allows you to move it between columns. We've got the dark-eyed junco. Uh, this is one of the cards actually I challenged um, uh, Elizabeth Hargrave won the game on the video that I did, um, and that's just a fa fascinating bird. If you ever get to see a picture of that in real life, it's pretty cool. And that one allows me to gain food from the supply. So a lot of these are quite similar. I swear I shuffled them. And I've got the Hermit Thrush, um, which when activated, placed with the fewest um, forest birds, will gain one food uh, from the dice from the bird feeder. All right, so that's that. Now I get to, um, if I had one, discard... Oh, actually, I should have discarded an egg because I took two birds, and that was the, that was a, there was a purpose for that. So I do that. Um, activating brown power. Unfortunately, I don't have any wheat for that, but I will move it over there regardless. And now the Automa's penultimate turn. Uh, oh, okay, so they're going to uh, discard all three birds' cards from the bird tray, then draws one and keeps it face down. So these are all going. Well, it's good because I didn't want any of those anyway, and they're all quite similar to ones we had. And they're going to take one uh, face down um, on the here. So they're basically going to score four points. There we go. Uh, the other thing that happens is they'll lose a cube, but they can't go beyond um, zero. So that makes sense. Uh, so there we go. And then um, I think we refill it. That would make sense, right? Because if, uh, if otherwise there's nothing for me to get, and that's not fair. I'm just going to clarify that because I do think it's ridiculous. But uh, um, it doesn't say. It genuinely doesn't say. But I can't imagine a reason why you wouldn't um, refill them. That doesn't seem fair. Oh, so we've got the um, 
the box is all the way over there, but we've got the box cover um, bird, which is the scissor-tailed flycrasher. Paul says, okay, I've got to go food, then my stream at seven. Um, I hopefully be able to catch your stream. It might be done by seven by the way things are going, but thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'll see you on the next stream, uh, hopefully on yours later, and good luck with it. Um, okay, so this one allows me players to gain um, one worm from the supply. Um, it's worth a healthy eight points, but it's full of very difficult for me to get that one. We've got the uh, yellow-breasted chat. By the way, chat is a great name for a bird. Um, this one, when activated, if this bird is to the right, so it's another one that moves around. Um, and then this one is the whooping crane. Uh, the whooping crane. <laughs> um, the one played, draw two new bonus cards and keep one. Uh, I don't think any of those are good for my goal, so that's fine. All right, so my turn. I know exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do this. Uh, which allows me to gain food from the supply. Um, ah, damn, actually, I wanted to play something I can't. Um, I'm going to only end up getting something I don't need. Uh, that's tricky, isn't it? Um, but I do need some food. It's just annoying that the food that's there is not good for me. Um, so, yeah, uh, what shall I do then? Shall I take more cards? Uh, or shall I just take the hit and take something there that I don't necessarily need? Uh, actually, no, that's a lie. I could use um, worms. I could. I want wheat or fish or mice and then literally nothing else. Um, should I lay some eggs maybe? That might be better for the long term. And then hopefully he takes some food out. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to... Because I can now afford the eggs and it's good to have spare ones anyway. I'm just going to take two eggs from the supply. So let's take, um, let's take a different selection of eggs. It's very perceptive... It, very imperceptible difference there, but uh, we've got a pink and a white egg, but let's put them on that card there. That's end of that round. And now the final turn for the Otoma is, it's gonna take it's gonna take fruit, um, which is brilliant. It's gonna take all of those and leave just that, which is actually very good for me. But it is unfortunately going to add um, a cube to this, meaning that it is going to score uh, at the end of round goal. So speaking of that, now we're at the end of the round. Uh, for goal scoring, we're going to go through this. For goal scoring, the Automa has base value from the end of round goal, which is zero, this little number here. And I'll probably bring it closer to the thing so you can see. So it's going to get the end of round scoring. Because the end of round goal is, goal is this one, um, which means uh, bird cards with the nesting type with eggs on. Um, so we're looking at this top row and this cube. Whoops, flipping it around. It's not, not on purpose. Uh, is going to represent the base value add the number of cubes so it's going to satisfy one um one thing of that condition i also if you look at it i also satisfy this condition by one so this means that i'm going to take my one of my action cubes place it on first place and so will the so will the uh the automa they will also satisfy that so we're going to share um first and second place i think divided by two um, we can work that out later on, but it, oh, either way, we've not benefited or negated any any ability there. So we're kind of even Stevens on the end of round goal, but at least I wasn't losing out on points um, just from that at the end. Okay, so this what happens now at the end of the round, you flip the current round tracker card, which is this one, and it's going to basically um, start looking at round two. So we're going to look at the second columns now instead of the first one. Uh, remove noted card from automa deck and reshuffle now this one as you can see says remove after round one so we're actually going to discard that card we don't need it anymore and just to check there's no other cards in here that have that that saying on it and so we're going to shuffle these now shuffle these uh remove the noted card from the automa deck and reshuffle and then we're going to place the end of round gold scoring card for next round beside gold tile okay um Place end of round goal scoring card for next round beside gold tile. Ah, yes, that, that means we're going to flip this over um, to round two. So it's going to start with some slightly better base values. Okay, so uh, that I'm going to go first again because the game, I'm, I'm going to remove these. I think at the end of the round, you remove these as well. So these are going, unfortunately. That's fine because none of them I wanted anyway. And I'm just going to make sure that I do this as per the book. Uh, end of the round, scoring end of round goals. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Just the Automa deck. Place end of round goal scoring card. But in terms of the actual end of round rules, uh, we score the end of the round. Dis discard all face up bird cards on the bird plate and replenish them. Then rotate the first player clockwise. But I think in the Automa rules, it says specifically that you will always go first. Um, but it doesn't say. Maybe check this. 
Um, uh, yeah, I think that it can, I go on first again because the ultimate is just automatic. So yeah, let's reveal the new cards. Uh, we have the American Bitten, which that's good for me because that's one of the cards I need to score my goals. So I might try and get that one. And that one's power. Uh, when activated, players with the fewest water bird cards draw one bird card. The next one is the Sandhill Crane, and that one's also another card, good card for me. Um, and this one, when activated, discard a wheat to tuck two bird cards from behind the from the deck behind this card. So that's pretty good because it means you don't have to discard cards from your hand. Finally, we've got the American Robin. Very good um, for me. All of these three cards will satisfy my objective. And it says, when activated, tuck a bird card from your hand behind this card, but I get to replace it from one there. So if there's any cards I'm like, don't really care about those, then I can put them behind there and get another one from the deck instead. So that's good. Well, I can either draw one from here, I think, as well. So uh, I really want to get my hands on at least some of those cards, and it's good that I have the ability to do that. So the other thing is now the new round goal is any bird card in the water thing. So it doesn't matter if it has eggs on it or not. The round of end of round goal score this time is trying to just have as many birds as I can. Now I can see already that the, um, the, the bot, the Automa, has three. So I have to beat three. I already have one at the moment, and I only have two, three more cards that could do it. So there is a possibility um, that I could match it, but I'm very unlikely to be able to beat that, unfortunately. So anyway, let's see what happens. I'm going to go right in there. Um, I'm going to take some cards because I really think um, missing out. Unbelievable. This game is sold out again. They can't make enough. Well, I was speaking to um, Elizabeth Hargrave on the stream um, a couple of weeks ago. She said that the game sold... Around about 300,000 is how much it sold as of the time I was speaking to her. And that was like a very ballpark figure, but it's phenomenal. It's actually incredible to think that many games have been sold. So yeah, uh, I'm really sorry that you can't get your hands on it, uh, but they are probably going to be making more very soon. So I would just advise keeping an eye out, uh, maybe even getting it secondhand, because I know that it's a, there's 300 copies out there and 300,000 copies out there in the world. Somebody's probably going to want to sell it onwards because they've, found it's not for them so maybe check like facebook groups or um math trade on board game geek all that kind of stuff if you want to get your hands on it that would be my advice unless you can afford to wait which is probably not a bad idea okay so the first action i'm going to do is i'm going to use this uh, i'm going to take um the easiest one that i think i can get uh to the table is this one and it allows me to um get this card so i'm going to take that one and that one's great for me because it's going to be one more card that i can potentially use for my end of goal uh, end of round goal um and i am going to discard an egg because i don't need them at the moment um to get another card and i'm going to take another one of these and i think the second most useful one for me i do want another one i'm going to take another one of these because i can't risk let's let's do this um, in terms of when um, comparing, by the way, I think that I always win against this. So I would always get to draw a card if I get to, to the table. And I've got quite a lot of bird cards at the moment. Um, so apologies if you can't really see them in detail down there. But uh, just for now, if you need me to read out any of the powers on them, please just let me know. So unfortunately, that doesn't mean that discarded. But I think I got uh, enough good thing out of this. And this is another good card for me. It's the Eastern Screech Owl. Roll all dice not in bird feed of any on mice. Gain one mice and gain one mouse and cash it on this card. Um, this one is the uh, Hooded Warbler, which doesn't count. And uh, it's just a straight up uh, seven pointer card. And this one is the Painted Bunting, which is beautiful, by the way. I think that's the first time I've seen that bird card in play in a game. Um, when played, draw new, two new bonus cards and keep one. So I must discard a card from my hand to be able to get that. Um, I think I want to keep these two because these work very nicely together. Um, I definitely want to get rid of one that I'm not intending to play. Um, let's do, let's get rid of the Lincoln Sparrow. I think it's just not really what I'm looking for. Um, it does, it doesn't, it's outlive its, its usefulness as well. So I'm going to discard that in terms of paying for the second card. No. No, I don't have to do that. What am I talking about? I just need to discard a bit, a bit um, an egg, which I already did. So that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm doing myself an injustice by not paying attention here. So apologies. Okay. So um, next up is the Automa's turn. Let's see what they're going to do. Ooh, so they are going to take, well, first of all, it says um, if all um, the faces are the same, we're going to reroll. So um, Tom, whoa, eBay price is $105. That's a lot. Um, I think this game retails for like 50 pounds it might be like 60 dollars or something i don't know exactly the comparison but it's quite an expensive game uh, but it's very good quality 
Um, so it makes sense that it's, you know, a little bit more expensive. But, um, okay, so uh, I'm going to cry now if they are going to take away my fish. But they're not. They're going to take some wheat away. Sorry, I just got distracted by that. Yes, definitely waiting is the best option, I'd say. Um, so they're going to take that. Uh, they're going to take that, activate all pink powers. Unfortunately, I have no cards with pink powers, so that's no good to me. Um, but the good news is they've left me a fish, which means I can play. Um, I can play. That's sad, though. Look, because um, when I play this card, it says gain all um, fish that are not in, that are in that are in the bird feeder, and there's nothing. Uh, so that sucks. Unless I choose to to wait for a second. Retail is sixty dollars. Oh, that's a good guess. That's a pretty good guess. Um, okay, so I uh, oh I did that, and I didn't have a wheat to discard there, so I don't get to do that thing. I should have done that, but they've done their turn. Activate pink powers, nothing happens. Uh, so now it's my turn again. Now I am going to go and get some food. If I had, unfortunately, if I had another card, um, I need to. I just need to get a card. I can't play anything. As, oh, actually, I could play this one. Do I want to play this? Tuck a card from your hand behind this card, um, behind this bid, if you do draw one. Um, that one would be great and I'm going to say them why because if I do this it allows me to get two food so on that very basis I'm going to play this bird I'm going to play it right here into this section here so the American Robin is coming in and the good news is that's one of my end of round goal cards which is means that if I get two more on the board I'm going to go from three points to seven points so I'll play that bird card it costs me no bird it just costs me the one food there um, so that's paid for uh, when it's paid, it goes there, and uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Um, there's nothing else that happens. No. Uh, it's only worth one point, but it's fine. Uh, but it's also, handily, another nest type that will help me towards the third round goal. So, fingers crossed I can, I can beat that. Uh, okay, so the third, uh, second action for the Altoma, that was my turn, wasn't it? One, one, two, two. Yeah. So let's see what the Altoma is going to do. Don't take my food. <laughs> okay, so it's going to uh, remind myself again, discard all bird, three bird cards from the tray, then draw one and keep it face down. Okay, so that's fine. So they're gonna draw one card, keep it face down here and score themselves another four points. And then we're gonna refill this. But it also, as you see, does a add a cube um, to the end of round goal. Now the round goal this time is um, bird cards in regions. And that would be that one. So we're just gonna leave that there. Okay, so let's see what the new birds are. We've got the hooded Merganza. When activated, repeat one of the powers that's uh, drawn on. None of my cards have it, but there'll be a little power symbol there with this symbol. Um, so if I had one, I could repeat one. Uh, this is the tree swallow. When activated, t it's the tuck a bird card from your hand behind this card and draw one from the deck, I guess. And then the third bird card is um, the Osprey, which, by the way, um, where I grew up in um, South Wales, the local um, rugby team, uh, one of the two local rugby teams to where I lived, they were called the Ospreys. Pretty cool name. Um, and their um, colours, I think, were black and white, I think. Not 100% on that. Uh, this one is just, when activated, all players gain one fish from the supply. Well, that's pretty sweet. Um, but uh, will I be able to play that? Actually, that's not bad, because if I played that here... Uh, and then I, whenever I go to take more bird cards, I just get fish, which at the moment is something I need a lot of. So I could go for that one. Anyway, what? speaking of that, I have two fish now. I still can't play anything, but I am going to take some food. Um, and the good news is I can take two food now. So I'm going to do this. Let's go here. First things first, of course, I'm going to take fish because I am missing that, that, that uh, commodity. Uh, and so I can actually finally play this card, the Atlantic Puffin. Uh, and the other thing that I can do now is I can discard one of these cards. Ooh, I can discard one of these cards uh, to take another food from the supply. But here's my thought. Um, if I um, take the mouse, uh, I could play this card as well, which gives me more f uh, gains me more food. But if I re-roll and there's fish in it, I could just, I could, ah, it's tricky. Oh, this is tough. I think, oh, I gotta take a gut call here. I think that I will. I'm definitely going to take another food. I can't rely on him taking more food from the supply, but it is definitely going to reroll. Well, oh man, um, I think that I will. Um, <laughs> I'll take a risk. I think that I'm more likely to get a mouse, and if I don't get a mouse, at least I can get something else that I can play, and it means I can still play a bird anyway. 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to re-roll first. So I'm going to first discard a card. Which one do I not think I'm going to play? Um, I'm going to do this one, I think. Because this one is... This one is less good. No, no, I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to get rid of the pygmy. Nut hatch. Bye-bye. So you discard that to get another food from the supply. And I'm going to re-roll first. So we get to roll all of the dice. Yes! I'm so happy about that. I'm going to take a mouse. That couldn't have gone better. So I'm going to take a mouse there. And then um, I get this. Now, if he doesn't play, take food from the, the, the bird feeder, I'm going to get those fish. And that's going to be glorious for me. So, fingers crossed now. Um, oh, but this does mean I get to do this, the activate power. Tuck a bird card from my hand, and I can draw one from the um, thing. So that's going to get me a point, and I really ought to be looking at getting more points. Is there anything I don't think that I'm going to do? I think that I will get rid of this one, because I already have kind of eliminated that and that yeah i'm gonna get rid of that one so uh so actually sorry don't do that i tuck it um behind this and i draw another one i can take it from here uh which is good because i wanted this one anyway so yeah let's take that one the osprey i feel like that's calling to me because of the little rugby fact uh that i mentioned earlier on <laughs> okay so i've drawn one from there i need to check actually if i'm allowed to draw from there there's a lot of things about this game, if I haven't played it in a while, because obviously it's uh, been a while since I've been able to play games with other players, but I uh, just want to make sure that when you draw one, um, then you can take it from uh, the supply. And I think I'll have to check the appendix for that. What's that one? It's the um, American Robin. Uh, when activated, take a card, uh, draw one. When it says draw, I'm assuming you can draw one from anywhere, right? I just want to check that. Um, draw cards. Draw the face up, draw from the face up cards at the top of the bird. Card. Yeah, that's fine. And actually, what that means is, unfortunately, these get re-thrown out. Oh no, refilled, refilled, isn't it? Oh, I'm doing this wrong. I swear I'm doing this wrong. Um, I apologise. I think I just filled that up, right? And I think at the end of the round you get rid of everything. Ah, uh, man, if I've been doing that wrong, I feel so bad. Uh, let's have a look. Um, so when you draw cards, I think. Uh, Stand back. Yes, yeah, so yeah, if it waits until the end before refilling. So it's at the end of the round all the bird cards go. But actually, I think I might have been doing it right because I think that one is the one that says get rid of all of the cards anyway. So yeah, that's fine. We'll carry on. I think I've done it right. So I've done that. I've drawn a card. That's the end of the turn. This goes there, and now I'm done. So the next step is the automa. So please don't take food. Whew, that was good. That was good. He's going to take some bird cards though. So again, discard all three bird cards from the bird tray. And get rid of them and he's gonna take one of these draw one from here place it face down and gonna refill this because it will be news now we've got the common loon um, I think this is a Canadian bird because they named their um, their coins uh, the loon is on their dollar coin and so they and I've actually heard a loon call in the wild it's awesome um, if you ever get the option to it's got quite a haunting call it's very distinct um, but that power, by the way, says play with the fewest bit water birds um, habitat, uh, draw one bird card. This is the Anna's Hummingbird, and I think this is another one I've never seen in play before. Um, oh, at this point, uh, I feel like the last gamer on Earth who hasn't played Wingspan, I suppose I'll get around to it someday. I'm sure it looks great. Uh, it sure looks great. It really does. Um, it's better. I can't tell you, by the way, but this rule book feels... It's like the best field rule book I've ever had. Like, it's literally, when I took it out of the box, I was like... Ooh, I've never done that when I've like literally picked up a rule book before. So yeah, um, Anna's Hummingbird. Uh, each player gains one um, bit, uh, f food from the supply, starting with the player of your choice. So you can manipulate it so that you could get better choice, which is quite nice. Um, and the final card is the White-Breasted Nuthatch, which gains uh, f uh, wheat from the supply, cashing it on this card. And cashed food is always worth one point at the end of the game. Okay, so uh, that's great for me because... This means that I can do my, my brilliant thing of playing card. Um, I do have enough eggs, thank goodness. And I'm going to play uh, this card. So I'm going to play it here. Uh, I'm going to play this one into here. And then this is the bald eagle. And it says, uh, when played, gain all fish that are in the bird feeder. And I think, I mean, what a time for multiple fish to come up. So I'm going to take those. And I'm going to take these two fish here and they're going to add it to my supply. But I do have to pay for this. <laughs> I forgot, almost forgot about that. I have to pay for that bird. So there's two fish, one mice. It's played. And that is done. 
and I have to pay an egg for it because of this as well, which is good because I have one, and that is it. That has now officially been played. And I am done. Um, I haven't played it physically. I tried the demo and had the beta while they were testing it, but it's way more confusing because the three rows were not all visible at the same time. Yes, is that in the game? Because it kind of like moves forward and backwards, but yeah, you can't see them all. So you have to kind of like scroll between them, I remember. Um, the demo looks awesome though, and I like the animation behind it. Um, I've always been very impressed with any game, um, physical, uh, like video game that kind of goes, does that little extra touch where you can hear the, the calls of the birds. And um, that's really cool. Um, and actually like a lot of Stone Meyer physical um, interpretations of their game, the, 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 uh, the digital interpretations of their games have been very good, very good quality. Um, so anyway, all turn is turned now because I've taken four turns and they've only taken three. Um, and it's good because I don't care about the food anymore. Let's have a look what they're doing. They're going to get two eggs and going to remove a cube from that. So let's give them two eggs. Let's give them a blue and a green egg. Um, yes, it was 3D depth, but you could only focus on one row at a time. I believe they're changing that due to everybody wanting to see it similarly to the board. Yeah, and I think it makes sense because when you're looking at the end of round goals, when comparing other players, um, you do want to know what they're doing. And also, I'm forgetful. I mean, any way, any opportunity to forget something uh it's probably going to happen to me so i'm all on board with making it easier for for you to see the whole thing at once and that's good that they're at least taking that uh feedback on board so fair play uh okay so my turn the animated art sounds and even audible bird sounds uh audible bird facts were fantastic so they let's read out the facts as well that's that's quite cool uh okay my turn um i'm thinking about playing another bird again actually because i can play this um, uh, this, I could play this one or this one, and this one allows me to draw new bonus cards, and if I'm going to get a bonus card, it's a good time to do it now, um, and it's one of the other cards that helps me towards my goal, which is good, so I think that, hmm, this one maybe, this has got to be this one, this is worth eight points as well, that's another thing to think of, and it's, uh, I didn't mention this earlier on, by the way, but this one is a wild nest symbol. So if I'm competing for most eggs of a certain kind, wilds count towards any nest type. So if I have one at the moment. Um, if I still have um, this card and this card, and they both have eggs on it at the time, I'll have two towards that goal. So that's quite cool. So let's do, um, let's do this and place this one. So I can do this one. So I'm going to play another bird card. So I'm playing three this time, which is very nice. So let's play one here, uh, place it here, uh, get three, um, get three uh, food, the three fish there. And when I get rid of an egg as well, and when played, draw two new bonus cards and keep one. Oh, this is great. Hopefully this will give me some bonus points. So let's see what I got here. Ooh, birds with colours in their name. Now, I don't think I have any of those. Uh, birds that have at least one egg laid on them. Now, this is interesting. I could get three points. Um, this one's going to be very tough for me to get because none of the cards I have at the moment satisfy this. So I think already I'm put off by this one and I think I'm probably going to go with this one. But there's 34% of cards that have this. And actually, you can see that one has white. Um, there's probably a couple of the ones I looked at before that had like colours in yellow, yellow something, I think, yellow tailed something. Uh, so I actually think that one's not the best one for me to keep. So I'm going to keep this other one instead. And that will go over here. So I think there's a good chance I could get seven birds with an egg on them by the end. So yeah, let's try that. So that one happens when it's played. So that's the end of that. This one goes all the way over here now. And it's the end of my turn. So next up is the Automa. Let's see what they're doing. Uh, they are going to choose a card that satisfies their condition. Ah, oh, well, look at this. This is this. So they're going to keep that one. Uh, I think they're going to get rid of the other ones. Um, place up and discard any others. Face up. Oh, take all bird cards that match bonus card. Keeps highest point value card. Face up and discards any others. Now, I think in that instance, actually, it's just telling me to refill it. So I think, actually, I just refill. That's pretty sure what happens. It doesn't say discard them, does it? Um, annoyingly, it should say to just refill, uh, but it doesn't. So I am going to go with that. Refill it. It's the same as me taking a bird card anyway. Ooh, I do apologize. 
So we got the Bobo link, and this is another bird that came up in my little quiz, uh, trivia quiz with um, Elizabeth Hargrave. Uh, this one says, lay one bird, la egg on each of your birds with this kind of nest. Now that one, I actually only have one. I guess that would count as well. The wild counts as that as well. So I could get two eggs there, but it seems quite a faff um for that so probably not okay uh so, hello um thank you for joining fathoms um i i assume you are a board game player otherwise you wouldn't have joined but um if you are new please consider following i do have um board game content if you go back check my previous videos maybe when the stream's done you can see i do like um board game playthroughs mainly solo at the moment because of obviously the situation that we're in uh, but also um we do interviews with people in the gaming industry and that includes one of the person one of the people um who designed this game the person that designs game elizabeth hargrave so that's a good place to start i also have a youtube channel as well i think the um the details are like scrolling along on that thing so yeah sorry just a little bit of a side side promotion there but thanks for joining uh, i'll i'll carry on playing uh so they've done that i think it's my turn now because uh, we're on round seven one two three four five yeah so my turn uh i'm going to decide whether i want to get some food should be good opportunity or should i just lay some eggs maybe um i mean getting food's probably good uh hi i have to leave for a work a nice stream today Russ. thank you so much no genuinely thank you for joining it's been nice to play a game that i know fairly well and um and hopefully i'll i'll, I'll hopefully uh you know update you with whether i beat the automa or not later on um you do play board games i'll check out your content thank you so much i really appreciate that and obviously if you have any feedback for me let me know i'm always open to hearing what kind of things you think i should be doing and what games i should be playing um but yeah i'll guess i'll carry on with the game for the for the time being um all right so do want to get some food i could get something here maybe play um I, or maybe just get some eggs on birds because i um actually it doesn't matter right now i think what i'm going to do is I am going to play a, get some food. I'm gonna get some food, I think. Uh, I could get lots, I'm gonna get some food, I think. Yeah, let's do this. So I'm gonna re-roll this. Now I should probably take that mouse because uh, I could use it. Bye, bye, thank you for joining. Um, I could probably use that, that, that mouse for this, which is cool, but I think actually what I want is to try and bump up um, this bird count so I could probably just re-roll and hope to get um, just a straight up fish um, give myself I, I, I don't know I, actually if there's a fish there I'm going to take it anyway so I'm going to take the mouse I'm going to take the mouse food because I can hopefully play that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-roll before I do the second thing um, which means I have to discard a card sadly but I don't really want to discard a card um, so oh, maybe maybe in that case Hmm. Maybe in that case, I will just re-roll and not take the mouse food because I want to try and get this card out so it makes getting food better for me without discarding cards. I should have probably drawn cards first. I could have got three there. You know what? Doesn't matter. Right, let's just roll. Roll these and just see what we got. Okay. Uh, none of that's great. <laughs> uh, so uh, what I really wanted there was at least one fish. Um, but the the good news is that at least I'll get something. Um, I think I'll take the, I think that I will take the, the wheat, because I can take a wheat, and I can at least use it for something else in the meantime, so I'll take the wheat there, let's take the wheat, put it over here, and then we'll carry on with my turn, well the good news is, I could tuck a card from behind this and draw something else, the juniper isn't great, um, if I did, I could replace it with something over there, actually, I could take the hummingbirds, that might be not a bad idea because I could just use it to play in there um, and each player gains food well that's pretty good so yes I think I shall I will take uh, get rid of this one um, oh there's no way I'm beating that one so I think I might just get rid of that card instead I know it's in the water one but I got an easy water one to play there so yes let's do this let's get rid of the American bittern uh, no wait it's a tuck card yes it's a tuck card so I get to score that one that's good uh, almost lost myself a point there and then I get to draw one I'm going to draw the Anna's hummingbird and um, then what I'll do is I will go over here and end my turn the automa is next let's see what the automa is doing oh they're going to get some eggs well I wouldn't give them loads of green and blue so let's give them a bit of a different color egg here they're going to get six eggs in total now which is quite a lot but you know I still think I can beat them fingers crossed and um, then they're going to remove a cube from there but they don't have any there so that's actually good 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my last tin. Now, I'm not going to gain any... Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just going to play this. I'm going to play it right now. The Automa has three um, birds in this. Um, the game seems really interesting. I'll have to recommend it to my games that group. Well, yes, it is. Um, two things. Um, somebody earlier on in the chat mentioned that it's not available. Um, I think they're in America, I guess, based on the, the dollar um, figure. So America or, or, or Canada, it's apparently not available in retail right now because it's sold out. Um, but there's always secondhand um, and also if you're not from the US or whatever, you might be able to find it much easier. Um, but the good news is it's a hugely popular selling game, so there's bound to be new stock in at some point. And actually who I'd recommend is reaching out to Jamie Stegmeyer on Twitter or email um, or any other way you can get it because he's usually quite open with the information. He'll probably tell you when it's likely to be back in stock. Um, but if you wanted your fix of it now, I know that on Steam they have a um, they have a demo, a digital version of the game, which I think was in demo form last time I saw. That might be enough for you to try. Canada, great. Well, if you're, I've been to um, Vancouver. I've also been to Halifax. Um, those are the only two places. Oh, and Toronto as well. I've been to those places in Canada. Canada is one of my favorite countries, by the way. So it's good to see if uh, I want to say a Canuck, a Canadian. No, what's a Canuck? Is that like that's a that's a Canadian term? I swear, right? But it must be from a certain place. But a Canadian would be what you are anyway. So I'm glad to have a Canadian following me. Um, I'm going to play a bird. Ooh, I just realized I can't um, potentially get this because um, I don't have any eggs to play it right now. So I am fully at risk here um, of not being able to play this. So I should get some eggs. Hmm. Or I could just get myself a um, bunch of food that I can take right now and then play them next round, which is probably the better idea. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this. Ooh, I don't like to get rid of any of these birds, though. So maybe I could just take one food, maybe. Um, ooh, this is risky. Oh, I don't want to. Actually, I could just take two bird cards. But the food, the food right there. Uh, I'm Calgary, quite different geogra geographically from Vancouver, Toronto, and Halifax. So sorry. I know Canada is a huge place. I didn't expect to... Um, to have gone to happen to be but i know vancouver and toronto um are quite populated areas so i figured maybe there's a chance from there um and if you were in either of those places i could have actually suggested um i could have suggested places um where you could have bought board games but you probably know that already because you live there so <laughs> uh, there's a probably moot point um i'm gonna i'm gonna do some bird oh i didn't fill this up did i uh this one is the american kestrel well that's changed my mind because that is a bird card with a geographical um, name on it. And so I am one away from that right now. And so actually I'm going to use my last action to take some bird cards. And, um, ooh, I've just realized as well that I could spend this if I wanted to get two points, which might not be as good as getting a bird down. So maybe, I don't know, let's, t let's see what happens. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take two cards. I'm going to take this one, the American Kestrel, and I'm just going to take a random card that I have no intention of playing just for the reason of um, having a card to discard to get some other stuff. Ooh, a wild turkey. Interesting. Um, that, that's a weird little misprint on that card. You see, like, the wheat looks like it's lower on the second or first one. I don't know, it's a bit random. Um, anyway, uh, so what happens now is I skip past these because they have no brown powers to activate. I have no eggs to get a third bird card. Um, oh, I'd refill this, by the way. It's the end of my turn, technically. Um, so I actually, this one would go underneath because what I am going to do for the two points is I'm going to tuck this card um, and uh, th this, this card because it's from the deck down here scoring me two extra points and then this is refilled um here we go which is the american goldfinch another card that i would like thank you very much apparently a canuck is a sometimes derogatory name for a french canadian a combination of oh that's um that is not good but you know what i'm glad i learned that because i will never make that mistake again i just thought it was like i think it was because when the other day um there was a quiz show on on uh, the tv and they had a, a term for a chilango and that is a name for someone from Mexico City, um, which is just, I'd never heard the term before. And I know that Chicago's, Chicago, I think, has a very strange name for people. And uh, I know in Halifax, they're called Haligonians. And it just seems such a weird, um, 
like like a twist on the on the name to describe where they come from so i thought it maybe generally was just a weird um an unusual name for someone from a specific place in canada so apologies for any offense uh oh okay so they are they are a team as well okay that's probably why i'd heard it before uh anyway on to the automa's turn um, because i've done that and that's the end of that so let's see what the last action is well they're going to take some food and actually they're going to take the berries they're going to take the berries from here and activate any pink powers and i don't have any um in fact i haven't seen one any game any in this game so far so that's good it's not going to add a cube to there so i think actually i'm on par and i might actually win um the points here so uh let's resolve the end of the game uh for goal scoring the automa has base value which we see as being uh, oh, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is actually different. I absolutely smashed it here, I think, because it's actually only saying bird cards in the region, not eggs in the region. So actually, I have smashed it here. I'm going to take one of my little tokens. I'm going to put it on first place, because as you can see, I have three bird cards in the water region, but they have one, but no extra. So that's good. Etymology is so interesting. How long have you been making content in the tabletop world? Well, technically, I've been making content for about four years uh four years i want to say maybe five um and i've been started up review so if you go back on the website link the first review we did was in maybe 2016 actually so maybe four years and um and and we started in the uk games expo four years ago we wrote a lot of content and since then we've done some video content but it's only recently i've done streaming um and I've been doing more video content lately in the last year than I've ever done before. But if you go back and check our, our YouTube videos, our YouTube channel, um, we think is actually um, youtube.com forward slash chits giggles. I think uh, it could be that. Um, so if you check that, then you'll see all of the kind of video content that we've done. And uh, if you want to follow, which you, I think you have followed actually, um, you'll get notified anytime we go live and we do video interviews with um, board gaming industry folk, which actually... Um, what's coming up, we've got Gil Hover from Formal Ferret Games, who created Wordsy and High Rise and um, Bad Medicine. Uh, that's on Friday. And then I've got some others lined up in the future I'm very excited about. So you'll get notified if I do that. And then I do like some video game stuff as well. I kind of keep it a little bit board game-ish, uh, board game related, but video games on Monday and then board game stuff on Wednesday, which is what I'm doing right now. So um, thanks for asking. Uh, anyway, cracking on with this. End of round goals. Uh, I win the five points. They have... I think one, they have one, so they'll get the second place one, which is nice. Um, the third thing I do, or the second thing I'll do is to flip the round tracker. So this basically um, is gonna be round three. So you can see the values of the base value has gone up quite a bit here, but the round tracker here goes to round three, meaning that now we're going to go for the third row of each of them. And I take out the round two one that it says, one of them says remove after round two. So we'll get rid of that. And then we'll shuffle these up and prepare it ready for the next one. So we're going to crack on for the next one, uh, next round. Try and do it as quickly as possible because we are taking a little bit of time. But it's been quite fun. I'm enjoying it. Um, and so let's see what happens. First I go. That's my thing. Next we're trying to get um, birds with this symbol um, that have at least one egg on them. So currently I have two that satisfy this one with an actual symbol and one with the wild. But looking at my board here, I've got one other card that I can play, and it's the Anna's Hummingbird, which is one I want to play because that will get me more um, that will get me more eggs or food. Um, so we'll try and play that one as soon as possible. And so I take all of these back, and we'll start again. So start the next round. What do I want to do? Is it worth me getting some food right now? Um, so for Chits and Giggles, is a um, is it was it is was slash is a team effort um the guy who actually started it is a very good friend of mine ben he did it for a while and then he had to move to australia and then his situation changed and he didn't get to play board games as much anymore so he felt it was best if he just took, took a step right the way back and just didn't really get involved but you actually see i interviewed him um we had a little podcast together recently um so he still does do the occasional thing but my sort of my main partner in crime is a guy called david and he does still does the occasional review podcast and stuff like that and he was actually on some of the earlier tea and a chit chats with the interviews with folk in the industry um which he was on but he actually hasn't been doing much lately because he's got a real sore um ear like a really bad situation going on with his ear so he can't use the headphones which sucks but um yeah so for the most part it's me with the odd help but i'm always looking to maybe see if other any people is looking to work with because i think it's very important that we have you know different points of view from different people different backgrounds 
And so, you know, um, depending on what happens, like I would love to potentially add some more people to the team, but it doesn't get paid. I don't get paid for doing this. So um, unless you fancy like um, sponsor, uh, sponsoring me on pay, becoming a patron, but I'm really not asking for this. I'm just enjoying doing it on the mo as, as, I, as it is at the moment because it's kind of fun for me. So uh, let's, let's go back to the game and let's see if I can turn some food uh, and get some birds on the game. Well, actually I do need, first of all, I need eggs and birds. Um, but I want to try and play a bird in here. So actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to take some food. Um, I am going to get rid of one of these birds. I think I'm no interest in keeping that whatsoever. So I'm going to discard that. Um, you can contact me on Twitter, to be honest. So if you go to Twitter, it's number four chits. Actually, you'll see it. Uh, oh, it's it's not actually on there. It's meant to be visible on there. But I've got a little, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, four chits and N4 chits and giggles you can just search for for chits and giggles ross and for there that's the best way to contact me uh, so i'm going to get rid of that bird so i can get two food so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to get rid of that uh, so i get to take two food now i'm definitely going to take worm because um both of the birds that i could potentially use will allow me to take that so let's do that let's find a worm and let's pop them over here and then i'm going to re-roll this so i'm going to re-roll all of these and see what we get Okay, so we've got a fish, which is nice. Maybe I'll take that fish. That fish has been very hard to get. Um, but if I take cards, I will get some... Um, oh, no, I won't, actually. Uh, if I play this, I'll just get some fish, which might be nice, but nothing else I use takes it. I've got to think now, do I want to take this, which allows me to um, increase the amount of eggs that I can potentially take, or do I want to play it here, which is actually going to be beneficial to me um, for getting more food? And I think I want to do that. So if I took the wheat, for example, I could play this here. But similarly, actually, I think I'll take this and play this. When activated, takes food. That one's brilliant for me. Um, so actually, I'm going to play this one. And meaning I can just take anything I want. And let's, for sake of not losing out on playing that fish, I'm going to take the fish as well. So um, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do this. Take Tuck a bird card from my hand behind this bird. And if I do, I get to draw another one. And that might be nice because I can take the American goldfinch and potentially increase the amount of um, amount of food. Uh, sorry, bird cards that I can play. Um, although it's not in kind of the area I want, but that's fine. I only need four anyway. And I've got one, two, three. So I actually, as soon as I play the American kestrel, I'll be fine. So maybe I don't take that one. Again, maybe take it just in case and I can always get rid of it later on. So yeah. Um, so wait. Uh, I've done that and I've taken the two food tuck a bird card from my hand and if I do draw so let's get rid of maybe this one um, maybe this one yeah maybe this one I'll just get rid of that one and I'll draw this one instead so tuck a bird behind there to get an extra point and then uh, that's over there all turn was turn let's see what they're going to do they're going to take some food they're going to take fish well lucky I took the fish next up they're going to take mice but there's none of those berries so they're going to take some berries of course they don't collect actually any berries so there goes Activate all pink powers. Well, there's nothing of those. So that's the end of their turn. So my next turn uh, is going to go and get probably um, some eggs because I do need some to play food. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take some eggs. Let's do two here. Uh, and I'm going to place one on uh, this bird here. And I'm going to place another one on this bird here because those will satisfy the end of round goal. I'm probably going to use them anyway, but that's fine. So there we go. That's a nice, simple turn. Automa is going to add two eggs to their supply. So let's give them another matching one. I don't really know why I care so much about this, but I'm going to take two ones. They have like an even number of those. But you'll see, because we're in round three now, um, there's a little cube there, meaning I have to add one to this. Now, the goal at the moment is to get a egg uh, bird card of a certain type. I think it's this one bird cards with eggs yeah so they're gonna have a base of two so they now have three bird cards where, uh, compared to my two so actually that's a bit worrying i need to kind of figure out a way to get some more bird cards but that's fine we'll try we'll try our best uh so the third action uh of mine because they've they finished now is going to be playing a bird card and here's the good thing i'm going to play anna's hummingbird and this is going to go right up here into this section because it can be played there and I'm going to play pay with the the worm so I'm going to pay that worm there and that's paid for that as well as an egg I'll take the egg off of this card doesn't matter um and actually I will not take I that that doesn't matter it really doesn't matter I don't know if I'm specifying that uh so I do that 
Um, I have played the bird, paid for it with the egg, paid for the food, and so I get that. Um, and now this goes over here. And so every time I take food now, I just get two food and I don't have to worry about discarding cards, which is great because I don't actually want to discard many of these. So that's done. The Automa's turn is next. We've got take a bird card. So this one, just to remind us, to going to discard. These, this should have been replaced. Keep forgetting to do that. Um, Berwick's Wren. Um, okay. Uh, so discard all three cards from the bird tray. The Automa draws one and keeps it face down. So let's see, we're gonna do that. And I never get to see what those cards are. So that's done, so now we'll refill it. And with the turn to refill it, we've got the White Crown Sparrow. It's another one about moving the bird around. We've got the Mountain Chickadee, and I think that's one that I could get, and that's a one cost. Uh, it costs either a worm or a wheat to get, so that's quite nice. I'm still a little fuzzy on the scoring system and how to achieve points in this game. Well, I will help you figure that out, but this is a house finch, which has got a nice, like, red, sort of pinky, sort of um, face and chest, which is actually quite cool looking bird. Um, and that one's, and play it anywhere um, and just tuck a card. Okay, so the scoring system. Um, anytime you tuck a card behind a bird, that's every tucked card is worth one point. Anytime you cash a food on a card, such as this one, says discard one wheat to tuck to, sorry, that's not the one. There was another one um, which basically says tuck cards, uh, sorry, cash, there we go. I have a look at this one, the white-breasted nuthatch. When you gain one from the supply and you cash it on this card, which simply means just leave it on that card. You can't use those food, but they will be worth one point at the end of the game. Actually, do you know what? And even better is this to show you this. So when you're playing um, this game, uh, you basically score for this. Birds, birds have a point on them. So that little feather symbol um, on each symbol, the number next to it is how many points you've got, just simply for it being in your habitat. Um, the Bonus cards will score depending on whether you achieve the goal on that card. And usually they have um, two levels of, of, of scoring. So, for example, if I have um, seven to eight birds with at least one egg laid on them at the end of the game, I'll score three points. If I manage to get nine or more birds with an egg on, I'll get six points. Um, whereas this one says birds with geography in their name, which is why I'm going for birds with like American, Canada or, you know, Eastern, Kentucky, Sand Hill, etc. Any bird that has a geography in its name, if it's on my board, it counts towards this. So that's one other way to score points. The oh sorry, that's the end of round end of round goals. The points that I'm scoring here, uh, these basically, um, if I each round of which there are four has an objective. This one, for example, is a bird card with this nesting type with at least one egg on it. So every bird card of that nesting type with at least one um, egg on it will count towards my total for that. So let's say I had three, and then you compare it to the other players. Say that one other player has two, another player has one. Well, I would get first place for that, so I'd score the most points for that for that objective. The second play, placed player would get the second most points and third. And the rounds kind of increase the number of points available the further on you go. So the fourth round will have more points available for a first place in terms seven here, seven for finish first place, whereas the first round only has four points if you get first place. So it gives you more time to achieve that goal, but there's more points at, um, available for winning because obviously you have more people to compete with towards that goal as well. So that's what the end of round goals are. And you'll also score one point for every egg that's on a card at the end of the game. So I have an egg now, but if I use that and I don't like, if I if I use that, I don't get a point for it. But every egg that's still on my bird cards at the end of the game will be one point. And each bird has a certain number of eggs that they can hold. So this one only holds four, this one holds two, this one only holds one. So I can't like kind of keep putting them on, they have a limit. Um, you'll also score points for food on cards as I explained caching. Caching is just putting food on cards. You'll score points for those. And finally, tucked cards. So every card that I've tucked, because the game says tuck a card, you put it underneath and each card of those is going to be one point. So hopefully that's cleared things up a little bit. Um, but if you need me to clarify anything, I'm happy to do that. Um, okay, so I can't remember what, whether it's my turn or not. I've taken three turns. They've taken three turns. Oh, so it's my turn again. Um, now, I could play this one. Um, and I could, I could have, but I don't have enough eggs yet. So actually what I'll do is maybe I'll try and get um, food. Yes, thank you, sorry for distracting, totally fine. It's actually fine, don't you worry about it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna crack on. Um, what I need to do is figure out whether I, I wanna play this card, because it basically means I could potentially get more eggs. Actually, I'm not doing very good on this. I need to like kind of 
generate more food um, is really what I should be doing. Um, I could collect enough food to play this card um, and then that one gets me three wheat from the supply which would be good because then if I need eggs I have stuff to spend. Um, so maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'm going to try to play that. So the first thing I need to do to get that actually, speaking of which, let's gain some food right there. Because I've just noticed that when I activate this, I gain a food of my choice from the bird feeder. So that's pretty sweet. Um, so I'm going to do this. So I, first of all, I take two food. Well, I'm definitely going to want um, the worm because I can spend it. And it allows me to... So that's one of my foods. It also allows me to now re-roll because there's only one um, type of dice face showing. So I get to re-roll this before I take my second one. Um, I'm going to take, uh, there's no, I've got the fish, that's fine. Um, I'll take the mouse, actually. And then, um, so that's the second food that I've, I they can take, which I'll take that. And then the third thing is now I'm going to move over here and activate these. So it says each player gains one food from the bird feeder, starting with the player of your choice. Well, I'm going to choose me. The Otoma never gets any food from the brown powers. They never activate, so... I will take, um, I've got food mouse and that, so I've got enough to play those. So maybe I should just take wheat. I should just take wheat, I think. So let's do that. Okay, cool. And I'm going to get a lot of wheat, but that's fine because I can spend that to gain some eggs, hopefully. Uh, then that, then that's been done. Then I go over here, I can tuck a card from my hand. Now I do potentially want to do this, but I actually want to play all of these cards. So actually I'm going to refuse to do that. I'm going to say no. No means no. Uh, so that goes over there, and that's my done. So Automa's turn next. They're going to add a cube to the tracker, which is a shame, but it's fine. I can deal with it. Um, two points is three points for second place is not terrible. Um, but they also are going to do this action, which is to take all bird cards that match their bonus. Now nothing is there. If none match, they draw one and keep it face down. So they're going to get rid of all of those. Um, take all bird cards that match bonus card. Automa keeps high. Highest point value card face up discards in it. None match. Yeah, so they're just going to do this instead. They're not going to see. They haven't seen anything that they want there, but um, there we we can just carry on. Um, so that's that done. I've added the cube, so now it's my turn again. Now I need some eggs because I want to play some birds. So I'm going to have to go here. Um, oh no, actually, yes, I need egg. Oh, I could. No, you know what? At, at this point, having eggs on card is going to be useful for me. Um, how many can I get? I can get maximum of three. Um, and they have two, three, four at the moment. So even if they, um, I think actually maybe I'll just do this. Uh, discard one wheat. I just want to play something, but I need at least one. So actually, you know what? I am going to take some bird. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take some eggs because I think it's important and allows me to play birds later on. So I'm going to put one on there and one on there. And I'm probably going to play um, a bird card next turn anyway. Oh wait, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, because I just realized I can play a bird card, um, this one, uh, this one, or this one for no thing. So yeah, actually, let's do that. Let's play the, um, let's play this one here. Oh, I haven't got enough for that one. <gasps> I was, could have gave me three things from the, from the display, but this could still potentially help me out, maybe. Um, so I'll play that one there and it's worth five points. So that's still pretty good. And I pay for that using a wheat, uh, sorry, a worm and a mouse. So those go in there and that is done. All right. So then it's the Automa's turn. Let me just check. I've got this right. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's right. Five, fifth turn. What they're going to do, uh, they're going to add another cube to their supply. So unless the next one is to remove one, I'm definitely going to lose this, but that's okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is follow this, which is to take a bird card that matches their bonus card. Nothing is. So they're going to draw this, keep it face down again. It's another four points for them. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, and then that's the end of their turn. So my final action is either to try and compete with them now, which at the moment I could get another, um, uh, I could get another one point um, because I think you add those two together and divide the difference, round it down. So I could just do that or I could just take a chance and just dr maybe draw, um, maybe maybe do this um, or I could get some food, uh, which allows me to get lots of food or I could just take bird cards um, 
oh, this is good. This is a great game because every decision feels like very important. Um, I guess let's just take some eggs. I mean, I could potentially win and I could also potentially gain some mouse food anyway. Yeah, let's give it a go. Uh, there's nothing I need in there anyway in terms of food, so I'd just be taking stuff for the sake of it. So yeah, let's, um, let's do this. Let's take two eggs and place them onto these birds over here. Um, oh, yeah, no, that's fine. I, I thought I'd uh, mistake anything, but that's fine. So I put the eggs on there. I could spend a food right now to go another one, but I don't want to because I want to keep that for that and we keep that for that. And um, and yeah, so I don't want to do that. So that's my turn. Now I get to do this, which is a thingy um, power, the one that I was mentioning earlier on. Um, it says, when activated, roll all dice not in the bird feeder. If I roll any mice, I can cash it. And I've done this uh, in a previous game and I got like hardly any from this but um, a two's not a lot. So if I'd rolled a mouse there, I could have cashed that mouse from the supply of the card, but it didn't. So it doesn't matter. It was only a um, one in three chance, I think, of me rolling a mouse. Uh, anyway, so that goes there. End of my turn. The final action for the Automa is... Ooh, well, this is good because it removes that cube. It's still four, though. I'm still not going to win this. Um, but it gets them a bird card. So draw a bird card from here. Uh, discard all three from the bird card tray and draw one, keep it face down. So they're going to do that and pop it under there. And then I'm going to refill it, which is kind of silly because we're just going to refill it now at the end of the round anyway. Um, so uh, there's nothing necessarily that I want there anyway. Uh, so the end of round, uh, for goal scoring, the Automa has the base value from end of round goal, which is two plus the number of cubes. So they have four. I have, unfortunately, only got three. So I'm going to get second place. But second place is still three points compared to their three six points. So that's actually not the end of the world, to be honest. Um, these are all going to come down here. And then what I'm going to do is um, flip this over. So it's round four now. I'm going to remove the... Oh, forgot to do that. I'm going to flip this over as well. Uh, wow, they've got so many base values in that. And then one of them says remove off round three, which we'll do. And then uh, we'll shuffle up this card, deck of cards. And then we're going to discard all of these because that's the end of the round as well and refill it. So we've got the ruby-throated hummingbird, um, which is another one about getting food from the bird feeder. We've got the dick sissel, which is tucking a card from your hand behind this bird. And if I do, I can lay an egg on that bird. And we've got the western meadowlark, which I think is another card that I could potentially play. And that's when activated, all players lay one egg on any bird matching that nest type. Uh, but I may lay one additional egg. Cool. That's a pretty good one, that one. Uh, okay, so I'm going to shuffle that and carry on. My turn first. Got five actions. That's it. Um, I think that now I've no need to um, keep the... Um, oh, so this is the one uh, that we're trying to get. So he's got seven... Sorry. Uh, this is it. Bird cards in the region. He's got three bird cards in that region, so I need to beat three. I don't think I will. It's going to be very hard for me to beat that. But if I can get second place, that's enough for me. So yeah, my first action is going to be to play, because I don't need to keep eggs on cards anymore. I'm going to play this one uh, in here. Uh, there's no wheat. I don't need that. So I'm going to go here. Play this. So I get rid of two eggs, because um, that's the cost of that. I'm going to play the one bird f uh, fish food. I'm going to play the Osprey in here. It's worth five points, which is still not too bad. Uh, and then I'm going to... Um, it doesn't have a one played ability, so this goes over here. And then that is me done. So that's it. Let's see what the Automa is going to do. Uh, they are going to add a cube. I should do this in order, really. Take a bird card from there. There's nothing there that matches there, so they're just going to take another face down card underneath there for another four points. Uh, okay, so my... Oh, and then add a cube onto the section, which is this. So they currently have four birds that satisfy the condition. Uh, okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is my turn, uh, which, what shall I do? Now, I want to try and get some food. Um, if I get, get some bird cards, though, maybe that would be the way to go because I could potentially get some um, extra abilities or play again a fish from the supply, um, discard a wheat to tuck two cards from the deck behind this bird. That's another two points. And I'm maybe having extra cards to kind of um, tuck and stuff might be good. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go here. So let's take three cards. I'm going to take the Western Meadowlark. I don't think I'm going to get to play this, but I could if I get food, if they're still there, at least I'll get the, um, the worm and I could use that and play this card. And um, the second thing that I'm going to do is to take a card from here. I think I'm going to take a card from here and see what it is. We've got the Red-Breasted Nuthatch, which is actually great because it's in this region, which is nice. 
um, and it allows me to um, cache food. And the third one I'm just gonna take from here as well, which is the American Crow, which is great because that's actually one that I need for my objective. So just wanted you to know I'm thoroughly enjoying the stream. Thank you. That's actually the nicest thing you could possibly say to me right now. So thank you so much. Um, I do genuinely listen to feedback. So if there's anything you like, oh, I think you could be doing that better. Um, like, please let me know. I'm totally fine with um, accepting feedback. So yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, I just, oh, you can see that. I thought you couldn't see that for some reason. All right, uh, okay. So now that's done, I've played that. Now I get to do this. All players gain a fish from the supply. Well, that's great because I can pay for one of those cards. Um, then uh, this goes over here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. I could discard that wheat right now, um, which is making it seem more possible because I could now pay um, a worm or at least I could play this American crow um, which is actually pretty good and um, so actually I think I will do that I'm going to s discard a wheat to just tuck two birds from the deck oh I should have filled this up first actually um, no that's at the end of my turn sorry I didn't read that I, I know you don't have to trust me that but I didn't read what's on that card so I don't know if it's one of the birds that's towards my goal but I took two from there um, now it's the end of my go now I can refill the board so this is a lazuli bunting, which is cool. All players lay one egg on any bird matching this nest type, but I may add an additional one. So it's very similar to the one I had before. There's really nothing I change. Your voice sounds great, the picture is clear, and the energy is really high and engaging. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad. I, I uh, couldn't ask for better feedback. Thank you. I'll um, I'll keep doing it then. I'm nearly at the end of the game anyway. So, um, okay, so that's it. The bird card, so it's the Wartimer's turn. Let's see what they're going to do. Oh, they're going to take some food, and they're actually going to take some berries. So there we go. They're going to take the berry, activate pink powers. Again, I haven't seen a pink power this whole game. They do exist somewhere. Um, so they're going to do that, and then that's literally all they're going to do on their turn. Uh, so my third um, last turn is going to be um, probably laying eggs. I don't know why. I think it maybe just helped me play some cards. I've got one egg, but I think, I think um, if I played... If I played this, ooh, discard one egg from any of your other birds to gain one food from the supply. I've got to think now whether I want to play that there. That will get me more food. Actually, that's probably brilliant. I'm going to play this. I'm going to go here. So I'm going to play this here. It doesn't help me towards my goal, but I'm very doubtful I'm going to beat that goal anyway. So I'm going to play this here. So it cost me one egg, yes, which is one point. But it gains me four points. And you'll notice that now, oh, I am actually overachieving on that. Is there another one I'd rather play instead? Um, or was it, I only had the fish, right? Yeah, so this is the only one I could have played because of the, the food cost. Um, so there we go, I'll play that, that fish um, to pay for that and the egg. And now I've put the American crow in and uh, that's it. So that's that for that turn. So that's another four points, it's not bad. So let's see the Automa's turn is gonna be to add three eggs, okay greedy uh, so let's put those there so we've got one two and three so they're on 11 points just from eggs which is actually good it's a very good score um so that's that 11 uh, sorry they've done that eggs they take a cube off here which is interesting now there's a potential that i could compete with that now but i think it's still a bit risky to be honest um i'm gonna get food and then i'm probably just gonna lay eggs realistically i think that's the best i can do so if i take food i can play oh Oh, I could play one of these cards for more. Um, none of that's not good to me anymore. Um, that one could be if I played that one first. No, you know what? I don't even think it's worth collecting eggs, really. Maybe just eggs. I don't think I can play any of these. I could get some food and I could play one of those cards. No, I couldn't because if I got food... All right, there's a way I can do this. I just need to figure this out because if I was to do this... Right. Um, it, if I was to do this action and gain eggs, I could play some eggs and then I could discard one of those eggs to get a food from the supply. And that food could be then enough to pay for this card, which is two points. Um, and then I could potentially then use that. Actually, that's looking more and more better, like a good idea. Because if I was to go here and gain some food, um, it wouldn't actually help me play because I have no eggs with which to do, to do it. So I think the best option for me is to do this 
And I'm just going to roll with it, because I think that on my next turn, if I have enough eggs, I can still play another card. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. First things first, take three eggs from here. At this point, it really doesn't matter where I play them, but it says one for one of your other birds, so maybe I should do that. <laughs> Let's just do that. Uh, it doesn't matter, I don't think. So that's done. Now I'm going to go here and use this power, which said discard one egg from any of your other birds. Well, I'm going to take it from Anna's Hummingbird. So I discard it to take one food from the supply. Now it's any food that I like. So let's just take wheat. I don't know, maybe it'll come up. I don't think so. And as an additional thing, because this a power says roll all dice that are not in the bird feeder. And there's three, so there's a good chance. I think it's probably about one in two chance now of me rolling a mouse. And if any of them, I can cash a one foot food and get some points. So, damn it. Oh, I was really hoping for at least one mouse there. Uh, doesn't matter. Didn't get it, but that's the game. Um, so there we go. Didn't get that. That goes there. And now I am in a good position. I don't think I'm going to... Um, I could get that one. So as long as they don't gain any um, any sort of cubes, that's actually a good chance that I could compete. Um, so we've got this one, which is the... Reminding myself again, take all the bird cards that match, which it doesn't. Nothing matches that. He's very unfortunate in that. But he's still going to gain four points for it. So it's not that bad. Um, and yeah, that's it. If none match, Automa draws one and keeps it face down. Done. So my final turn is, as you know, I'm going to play a bird card. So I'm going to play this one. And just on the off chance that I can compete against this, I'm going to play this one here. So I'm going to spend my wheat. So I'm going to spend the wheat there, um, pay the egg. Again, it's one point for an extra point. Not going to make a huge difference, but at least it's um, potentially keeping me in the running for that. So then that goes there. And then it's done. That's the end of my game. I am done. So the one last turn, what I really don't want to see is a blue cube on this card. Unless it's got a cross on the top of it. <laughs> Damn it. It's got a cube and an extra three eggs. So yeah, there we go. Three eggs and there's their total score. One cube. So they're going to get first place. But it doesn't matter because I'm still going to be getting some points from that. So let's do resolve this game. Uh, I have... Uh, got to do this four goal scoring the automa has a base value from the end of round goal which is three plus the cubes so that's four and i only fortunately have one two three uh so i get second place and the automa gets first place i'm nearly done don't worry um and then the end of yeah the dreaded blue cube i know i'm devastated um but it's fine it's part of the game isn't it um so the flip the current round tracker so the next round is visible that doesn't apply so this is actually end of game end of game now I'm going to get to the here just to make sure I do this right. Um, game end scoring to calculate its final score. The automa gets points from the end of round goals as shown on the goal board. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to score anything uh, because they they suck. <laughs> uh, so they're going to score absolutely nothing for that. Unfortunately, they only got two, uh, which wasn't even enough to get their three points. And um, they're going to get points printed on each of its face up bird cards, which isn't a lot actually. Um, but they're going to get lots four points for every tucked card. And one point for each egg. So let's let's work out um, let's work out its points first. So we're gonna use the score pad, which is here, and then I'm going to use my fancy pen, a fancy park pen, um, and see how much points we've get. So my my points, uh, no, the, the Thomas points. Where did I put their cards? Did I put them? I must have put them somewhere, right? Am I? Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get four points for each of these. So. Uh, Oh, actually, they're going to get points for their face-up bird cards. So um, that is uh, points for the end of round goals, zero. End of round goals for, for me and the AI. So zero points for their end of round goals. Their bird scored 10 points. Their bonus card scores... Oh, oh, sorry, the, that's zero. They get no bonus cards. Um, no, wait, hang on. Is that right? No. To calculate its final score. So I think actually maybe there's a different sheet or something, but I may have missed it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I think I've messed that up because they don't actually score points to their face up. They just get, um, they just score this depending on that. So it literally says points from the end of round goals as shown on the goal board. So let's do that first. Let's just do that first. Uh, so this is, they're going to score. And again, this is the only thing I'm not 100% sure is I think you add them together. Uh, both cubes and the typers do not award the next place. Place both cubes on the tie place, do not. 
I've gamed in to add the points to that place and the next one, divide the number of players and round down. So in this tie situation, we score uh, two points plus uh, yellow scores another two. So it's four plus six, which is 10, plus seven, so 17 for the end round. So let's do 17 for that. I should probably do this here so you can see it. So they're gonna score 17 points for the end of round goals. The next thing they're gonna score uh, is the points printed on each of its face-up bird cards. Now, unfortunately, it didn't actually get a lot, so it's gonna uh, it's gonna basically get ten points for the bird cards. So that's I've already done, and then four points for each of its face-down bird cards. So I just put that anyway, I guess. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six, forty points. So forty points for that. So I'll just put this. Uh, I'll just put this here for tech cards. And then finally, they're going to score points for eggs. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 14 eggs. So their total is 54, 61, 71, 81. Now that's a quite a high score. Um, so I might not get this, but we'll try. And so my um, end of round scoring goes as follows. Uh, is this one. So end of round. Uh, oh, I know. I already know how this works. It's literally written on here. So birds. Um, so let's have a look. 1, 5. 7, uh, 12, 16, 19, 28, 36, 41. 41 for that. That's not bad. That's halfway towards my goal already. Um, bonus cards. Well, I did manage to achieve um, this one, the four plus bird. So I got the Canada Goose, the Atlantic Puffin, the American Kestrel and the American Robin, and another one, bonus one for, 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 for luck. So I actually scored seven points for that one, but zero for this one because I just didn't get enough eggs. Um, that was quite a hard one to achieve anyway. Um, the end of round goals. Uh, so let's have a look. I get two points for sharing that. I get five points. So that's seven plus three, 10 plus four, 14. So I get 14 for that. And then eggs, I get uh, one point for the egg. Food on cards, zero. And tucked cards, uh, which isn't loads, but it might be enough. One, two, three, four. Uh, I think that's four plus plus whatever's here five six seven so seven points and I don't think that's going to be enough but we'll see so 41 48 58 62 63 70 so I might have my ass kicked by the um by the automa in this game but I did enjoy that I thought it was great um so listen that's that's the end of this I've got a crack on because uh, not only is Paul uh, gaming rules doing a stream of his own which started like 15 minutes ago but I've also got a I have a partner who wants to do some yoga and I need to take up this space so um, I, I do apologize um, uh, for for like rushing away at the end there but I really hope you've enjoyed thank you so much for watching um, it's been an absolute pleasure I, I give this automa very much thumbs up and I really want to beat it um, at one point um, and I yeah I, if you can get hold of this game I'd recommend it because it's a very nice game. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. Um, I will hopefully catch you on the next one. But if thanks for following. And uh, yeah, catch me on Twitter or Instagram if you want to catch me in the meantime. But until the next time, take care. Hopefully see you Friday for the stream. All right, bye.